video, I'm going to be sharing 10 top tips on things not to do in the IELTS exam if you want a high band score. Before we get started, if you are interested in improving your pronunciation, maybe you have the exam soon and you want to get a high mark in the pronunciation section of your speaking exam, then check out my online pronunciation course, Pronunciation Pro. It is designed to make pronunciation easier and more fun and interesting to learn. It takes you from the absolute basics to the most advanced features such as linking, stress and intonation, which are all important parts of the speaking exam in the pronunciation pronunciation criteria, you will be marked on your pronunciation, remember that. So if you're interested in learning more about that, the course covers that. I will leave it linked in the description and you can go and check it out. If you also have problems with the listening exam, maybe you think that the speakers speak too quickly for you, then you can also take a look at the course as it will cover areas that will help you understand fast speech more easily. As I said, I will leave that linked in the description and you can go and check it out after watching this video. So tip number one is to never leave an answer empty. Never leave a space blank in the exam. You cannot lose points if you get an answer wrong in the exam, but you can only gain points. And many times when I've done mock exams with students, they haven't been sure what to put in the gap and they've just had a guess at what goes in the gap. And a lot of the time they are correct. So the fact that you don't lose points in the exam is a huge advantage to you. You can put whatever in the gaps, hope it's right and yeah, see if it's correct. Don't leave any gaps for your answers in the exam. Number two, this is more for the speaking exam, but do not memorize sentences and phrases to use in the speaking exam. It is so obvious when students repeat and parrot these memorized phrases, the examiner will know and it will go against your score and it will mean that you get a lower band. So be very careful. Tip number three is to not fall for traps. So what I mean is more focused on the reading and the listening exam. What will happen is a lot of the time the question, especially the multiple choice questions, will have a phrase that looks very similar or sound very similar to what's in the recording or the text. And this a lot of the time is just a trap to try and get some of the lower level learners in the exam. So make sure that you're not falling for these traps, really, really practice and just don't fall for the traps is all I can say. Be so careful because the IELTS exam is designed with these traps. It is there to catch out the learners and don't let it catch you out as well. Number four, and this is so important and quite often neglected, don't forget to leave time at the end of your writing exam to check your text. Leave at least 10 minutes and then you can go through, check everything and make sure that you're not going to lose marks over silly little spelling mistakes or grammatical mistakes. A lot of the time when I check students' homework and I go through their IELTS writing and there are little mistakes in there, I just know they haven't checked and it's such a shame because they're losing points over things that are so avoidable. So please make sure in the writing exam that you leave time at the end to check your writing, proofread it, and also quickly check the others as well for listening and for reading. Make sure you check your spelling, make sure all of that is correct, and then you've got the correct answers in the correct boxes for the right questions. I had a student once put the wrong answer in the wrong box, and of course, they lost the point. Tip number five, do not spend any longer than 20 minutes on the first part of your writing exam. So the writing exam is split into two sections, part one and part two. Do not spend longer than 20 minutes on part one of the writing exam. It is worth fewer points, so it is better to put more of your time and effort and energy into part two. And don't forget to proofread it. <laughs> Number six, now there is this common myth that you must use idioms and collocations. And if you use idioms and collocations, then you will get a very high band score. And that's not the case. You must be using idioms and collocations in a natural way in the IELTS exam. So if you're just memorizing collocations and idioms and just throwing them in there, then you're not actually going to get the points that you 
think you're going to get, unfortunately. You need to be using them in a natural way. So overusing them or using them in an unnatural way, such as maybe not using them in the correct context, can really go against you. If you're interested in learning some collocations for the IELTS speaking in writing exam, I have a full video dedicated to that. I will link it down below in the description for you to go and check out after watching this video. Tip number seven is do not use the same word in your questions in the speaking and writing exams. You've got to try and paraphrase the question, especially in the writing exam. Never copy the question and try to avoid copying as much of the vocabulary as possible. I know sometimes it's difficult, you've got to use the same word sometimes because no other word exists for that, but be careful that you're not repeating the exact same wording because if you do, you're only telling the examiner I can copy you. <laughs> You're not telling the examiner, look at all these synonyms I know, look at how I can paraphrase things. This is a skill that you've got to learn to develop, okay? So do not copy the exact wording of the questions. This also goes for the speaking exam. A lot of students get nervous, so they end up just repeating the question that the examiner said and then sticking their answer at the end of it try to avoid doing that because as I said you're only showing the examiner look I can copy what you said and that unfortunately is not going to get you points. Number eight is such a common problem and it's when students believe that they should be walking human dictionaries. Now don't try and overcomplicate things by using too much complicated advanced and complex grammar, the same with vocabulary. Just make sure that you're using the appropriate vocabulary and grammar for the context that you're writing or speaking in. Don't try and use super fancy big words all the time with super complex, complicated, advanced grammar because then it becomes really, really difficult to understand you, whether you're speaking or writing. And if the examiner can't understand you, then they can't mark you properly. So you are not a walking human dictionary or a human grammar book. Don't complicate things. Just use the grammar then the vocabulary that's necessary and in the most natural way for the context that you are using it in. So in the writing exam and the speaking exam, I mean. Number nine is very important and it's one that worries a lot of learners and it's not to worry about your accent in the exam. Instead, think about improving your pronunciation. Pronunciation is marked in the speaking exam and you will get extra points for using certain things like connected speech, intonation and stress correctly and naturally. So definitely focus on these parts when you're wanting to improve your pronunciation. Don't worry about your accent. My final tip, tip number 10, is don't forget to use test papers to practice before the exam. So many students, they will end up buying a textbook, they will go through the textbook and they'll think, okay, ready for the exam, completed the textbook. And they've not done any test papers to practice. I highly, highly encourage that you go online, look for some test papers, there are plenty of free ones out there. I will leave some down below in the description for you. Go and check those out, do them, and it will also help you not just have a feel of what the exam experience is like, but it will also help you work out what problems you need to work on. So maybe you're not reading fast enough, or you're not speaking for long enough, or you're not using the right vocabulary or whatever, or you're misunderstanding questions or something. Doing the mock exam papers will help work out what you need to improve. To practice the speaking exam, what you can do is find a good teacher who will help you with that and give you feedback, especially a teacher who has experience of preparing students for the IELTS exam. Or if you can't afford a teacher, you don't want a teacher, you can get a friend to help you. If you don't have a friend to help you, then you can practice by yourself by recording yourself. There are also plenty of videos on YouTube that you can watch to give you different examples of the speaking exam. And they will usually also give you a band score, like a kind of uh, estimate of what that student will get in that speaking exam that they're practicing in the video. So it will give you a good idea of what to expect and you can compare your recording and your speech to the ones in the video. You can also download the speaking exam criteria, I'll leave that in the description too. So then you can compare your compare your recording to the speaking criteria and see what else you need to improve to get the band score you need. 
And that's the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know which of these tips was the most important for you and which one you liked the most down in the comments. If you learned something new from this video and you enjoyed it, then please, please, please press the like button. And if you want to see more videos from me, then you can hit the bell notification icon and subscribe and you'll see more videos by me. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're interested in improving your pronunciation, then do check out Pronunciation Pro. You can get daily feedback on your pronunciation access to over a hundred pronunciation lessons, a monthly webinar and a one-to-one -one session with me every month. Good luck in your IELTS exam if you've already taken it or if you're taking it very soon. Let me know how it goes and how it went. Let me know in the comments. Best of luck and I will see you next lesson. Bye bye! <laughs>